Good morning, everybody, and we want to welcome you to our session for today. We apologize for the slight delay, but uh, we are trying to make sure for security purposes that we allow in the participants one at a time. Sometimes that takes a little bit of a while. So Karibuni, but as you join us, uh, I would like to ask a question and get you participating already. So if you go to the chat box, which should be at the bottom of your screen, I would like you to share with all of us, just chat and let us know what has brought you joy or happiness over the last two weeks. So again, we want to thank you for joining us today. And before we begin the session proper, uh, I'd like you all to just go into the chat box at the bottom of your screen. And if you can just type in there, what has brought you joy or happiness these past two or three weeks? So good morning, everybody. Again, we just want to find out what has brought you joy or happiness these past few weeks. As we're waiting for all the people who had registered to join our meeting, we do it one at a time for security purposes. Thank you very much. I can see Mercy says, I'm happy that my family and I are safe. That's definitely paramount, I think, in everybody's mind. George says, staying at home with the family and contributing to unpaid tasks. Asante, George. Doris, increased communication with family and friends. Very important, Doris. Some of the things we'll be covering today. Thank you for that. So again, if you can just pop in quickly into the chat box, what has either brought you joy or happiness over the last few weeks? And we will begin in the next few minutes. Well, I will share with you what has brought me joy or happiness. For the first time this weekend, I took a walk in a forest. So we have a number of forests and areas over here in Nairobi, and I hadn't done that in many, many years. So being able to walk in the forest and just breathe the fresh air brought me joy and happiness. Sheila, better communication with my two baby brothers. We now understand each other more than ever. Fantastic. Zena, you're saying actually sitting as a family for all three meals. It's never happened for over a year. You also have the emoticon of hiding. <laughs> Wonderful. Agatha says, getting more closer and connected with my children. So I, I'm sensing a trend or a theme here related yeah. to family and friends. So we'll just give it uh, a few just uh, maybe another minute for everybody to join us and then we will begin the, the session proper. We want to thank you all for your patience. And uh, Ruth says, having prayer sessions with my family. Thank you very much. So I think we have the majority of participants who had signed up, who have joined us. I know everybody is conscious of the time and you have a, a lot going on. So maybe we can, oh, here we go. We just have, 
Okay, I'm being told a few more people are joining, so we'll just give it a maybe one more minute. Jerry says, taking nature walks in my village and spending time alone has brought me immense joy. I can completely relate to that. <laughs> okay, I think we'll get started. Thank you very much for that. We will now close that chat. And uh, I want to formally welcome you to this in our ongoing series of the Resilient East Africa Challenge. That, by the way, is our hashtag. If you are inclined to use social media during this webinar, Resilient EA Challenge, we can also use the hashtag Mold a Culture. We have been running this series here in Kenya for the past couple of weeks, and today we're delighted to be able to share with this with participants from Tanzania. I'm sure the session is going to be equally rewarding based on the feedback that we got from previous sessions that we had. My name is Derek Banga, in case I didn't formally introduce myself. My job is very simple. It is to help facilitate and just ensure that this webinar is able to continue or flow without too much disruption. Um, just a couple of other housekeeping rules. We will be involving you in various polls and question answers. We will close the chat for the majority of the time, but we will also open it up for your comments and questions and obviously participation in the polls and the chats. For those of you who might miss this or maybe would like a recording, we will share a recording of the link. So this will be recorded and uh, we welcome you to share that with either colleagues or friends. So without any further ado, let me introduce the main speaker or star of the day. Uh, this lady has a tremendous amount of business and consulting experience, management consulting, training, organizational development, HR, and she also is, sits on the boards of numerous organizations in Tanzania and has worked very closely with senior business and political leaders in Tanzania. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to welcome Zuhura Muro, who will be your main facilitator for the day. Zuhura Karibu Sana, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dirk. Uh, welcome, everyone. I see we have a number of uh, participants who have joined the webinar today. We are doing it in the morning so that we can have quite a number of people participating. Some are working from home and some are working from their offices. I'm very happy to be with everyone who has joined us and also the team in Nairobi that we are working together spreading the good news about emotional intelligence. We will be talking about psychological well-being today. And uh, I will request that uh, we have a sharing of screen so that we can have some kind of visual aids as we are talking through. So this is not going to be like a, a panel session. It's going to be like a, a kind of a webinar training session where we are going to explore quite a number of, uh, of um, issues. So without wasting a lot of time, because I can see we are already um, moving very well, I would like to, to welcome everyone. And uh, and talk through. So um, the topic today is uh, enhancing psychological well-being. Um, sorry, uh, psychological well-being, and this is coming from Genos International, which is the emotional intelligence uh, model that most of us we use and we belong to a group of East Africans who are coach and practitioners. And we believe we have tools and uh, a number of other techniques that will assist most of the East Africans 
and especially um, the audience we are talking with today, how to cope and how to manage their psychological well-being. So we have prepared this session amidst uh, the coronavirus pandemic. We know it is actually swelling its attack on Tanzania. We know many people are having some kind of anxiety. And we have realized that we have spent a lot of time on telling people on how they can survive the virus from the physical point of view, washing your hands, making sure that you maintain social distance, making sure that you check what you, uh, you check the people you are talking to notice something. So all of these are issues to do with our body. And then we realize as uh, practitioners and coaches that a human being is not only a body, a human being is more of a package. A human being has a soul, has a spirit, has a brain, has so many things that are done to pack the human being to become a whole person. So we decided to have it a, a, a session that is focusing on psychological well-being. And this is out of our knowledge that actually your psychological health has great impact on your physical health. If you are not well psychologically, it can spell a lot of disaster in your physical being. So we are taking this uh, session very seriously to assist other people. We are also human beings and we know how we are feeling. And that's the reason that is pushing us to do these free webinars from time to time. And every week we have two to three webinars for East Africa. Today it is dedicated to Tanzania, but it does not mean that people who are from outside Tanzania cannot join us. So we will have about three main agenda for today. And it's because we want to keep the webinar for one and a quarter of an hour. And if we stretch so much, it can go to one and a half hours. So we look at the neuroscience of emotions, what actually happens, because most of the things happen to our bodies from the center. And that center is the one which we are going to discuss today. And then after we have this knowledge, we're also going to talk about how are we managing ourselves? How can we take you know, intentional um, um, actions that will act ensure that we are better in terms of our mental health. And then we will also hear from you what kind of steps you can take and will be sharing. As my moderator has put it, this is going to be quite an interactive session and we'll request everyone to really feel participative so that we can move along. After introducing the agenda, I would like to welcome back our moderator to take us through this section of the presentation. Thank you very much, Zuhura. So what we have on the screen here is a feeling chart. And what I would like us all to do is to, in the chat box, please enter either the emotions or the feelings or even the mood that you are going through right now. So what are you feeling right now? If you can just put in the chat box, which should be at the bottom of your screen and just type in one word, it could be two, about how you are feeling or your mood or your emotion right now. So I'm going to open up this chat box and just see what has come in. I have, but it is dormant. Okay, everybody, don't be shy. Fantastic. Violet says she's feeling zen. George says feeling relief. It's a good one, George. Idzai, feeling content. Anybody else would like to share their mood and emotion? Anil, you say anxiety. For sure. Zena says, I am in the red. You're uncertain, but you're also feeling gratitude. So that is typical, mixed emotions. Mm -hmm. Doris, you say that you're feeling uncertainty right now. We'll take a few more. Sheila, gratitude and uncertainty. Common emotions as we're all going through this together. 
Esther, you say that you're feeling uncertain. Jerry, again, a mixture of anxiety and gratitude. So Zuhura, those are the emotions that seem to be coming out. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of gratitude as well, mixed emotions. Yeah, mixed emotions. And it is normal in a period like this one, because sometimes you have, you are trying to make sense of the things which are around are happening, but you are not sure whether you are making sense. And sometimes you feel really confused and when you are having a mixture, a cocktail of emotions, then that's what happens to your mental well-being. So that's why we are having this particular session today to try to see where we are. More emotions are coming. Anxiety, I'm feeling red, but also a lot of attitude, uncertainty, relief. Yeah. Yes, we're still getting some more mixed emotions, gratitude, uncertainty. Rose says she's feeling bored. Bored, yeah. Yes. Boredom. <laughs> yeah. And some more uncertainty coming through. So you can conclude the theme of the day is more of uncertainty. Yes, Zuhura. So I think those are most of the emotions. I think most people have typed in what they were feeling. Mm. Somebody has said frustration as well. So mm -hmm. it's a mixed bag of the yes. red and the green. Okay, maybe Dirk, you can explain the red and green because you have a color code, almost like traffic lights. Right, so on the right hand side where you have the yellow and the green, those are obviously more pleasant emotions that we are feeling. And typically we would find ourselves in those two boxes throughout the period of say a 24 hour period or day. The feelings on the left hand side, the red and the blue, those are the more unpleasant emotions. And again, because we have as many emotions as we have thoughts throughout the day, what we are going to try and help with today's session is how to manage particularly the ones that you find in the red or in the blue so yeah. that they can we can counterbalance them with those that we find in the yellow or the green box and this is actually a great exercise to do on a regular basis where you can just check in with yourself um, on a periodic basis it could be once a day it could be twice a day just to see how you are feeling. And this box is actually a great way of being able to kind of map or mm. see where your feelings are. Okay. Zuhura? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, go ahead, thank you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, we, we have done an exercise and it is very important I just want to bring to your attention that uh, a human being in a course of 24 hours, mm -hmm. they have ability of producing about 15,000 thoughts. And those thoughts actually they influence how we feel, what kind of actions that we take and what kind of behaviors we display and so on. And those have a direct relationship with how we relate with our family, how we relate with our neighbors, relate with our coworkers, and if you are not aware of those particular thoughts and the kind of the emotions that they trigger, then you may be uh, working in a stranger's mind. So now I'm taking you straight to Genos Applied Emotional Intelligence, which actually we are dealing a lot with what goes on in the brain. As you can see, uh, we are in 33 countries and this started in Australia and it is a well-researched tool that actually um, has studied how human beings react and how do they respond to some of the triggers that come out. So we are very blessed that in East Africa that we are a number of people who are practicing applied emotional intelligence and we have been delivering services to a number of clients, to private individuals, and they have found some of the, uh, the tools and the techniques that we have delivered them very useful. Some people have even reported they were about to 
leave their job for no apparent reason, but after they did applied emotional intelligence, they stayed on and they are making great contribution. We have had testimonies of people who felt like, now I'm done with this marriage, but after attending our courses, thinking differently, perceiving things in a different way. So we say this is game changing for uh, business, but also it is life changing for human beings. Um, so that is your emotional intelligence, applied emotional intelligence under genos. Now, when you look at the model, uh, the model that we are using, as I have mentioned, it is a well-researched. We started in 2002 and we have invested a lot of research in this particular model. And we are led by a Swiban University of Australia in terms of studying the trends and how human beings are evolving in terms of how they think and in terms of how they interact. Now the research, which is very interesting, shows there is a relationship between what is happening in our physical body, where you have your heart or what you refer to as cardiovascular health. Most of the time we are told what to do so that we can improve our heart functioning. But in most cases, some of us, we do them for a few days and then we stop doing them. But also when you look on the other side, you have what we call your brain, which actually forms part of your emotions and your, 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 your mental health. There are also sometimes we are told a number of things that we should take. Just like the cardiovascular, sometimes you say, oh, this technique, okay, I'll practice it, but you don't spend time to practice it to see how it will take you. So today, we are going to try to use all the information, I mean, some of the information from the research and try to present it to you in such a way that you can relate to what is happening to your life. Now, the model that we are using, it has six competences. And these six competences, we call them the core emotional intelligence competences. We have the self-awareness, we have awareness of others, we have the authenticity, emotional reason, and self-management and positive influence. Now, today, we'll not be able to cover the entire uh, uh, model uh, as the six competence, but we are going to focus on two very important competences, which actually, if you look at what human beings are able to do, there are two things that we can control. And this is what is related to a psychological well-being. Our self being aware of what is happening in our lives, meaning that you are being present, you are able to record your emotions as they occur, and you are not disconnected. In Kiswahili, we say, mtu amejitambua. Somebody understand how emotions keep on moving whether it is on the red or on the blue, on the, uh, on the yellow or on the green, they are able to really pick those emotions. And then the second one that we are going to talk about, it is self-management. Yes, okay, you have now been in touch to your emotions. You have been present, you understand what is happening. Now the issue of how are you going to respond? When you come to the issue of self-management, it is actually talking about your self-control how intelligently you are responding to some triggers that may bring some stress to your life. And this is what we refer to when you are being productive, you are being resilient. Like now the situation we are in demands a lot of resilience from us. But then when you are out of control, we say you are being temperamental because you become like a bull in a China shop where you are charging and you are blaming everybody and you are blaming the world and sometimes blaming yourself. And these are not good for your psychological well-being. So today we are going to focus on those two and look at various things that we can do. Now coming to the uh, self-awareness, which is very important. There are so many books that have been written about living in the present moment because the human beings will have this um, tendency of trying to live in yesterday, in tomorrow, and forget about the present moment. So the self-awareness is a competence which actually grounds you. It makes you focused. But then today we want to look at it from the science of emotions, which we are referring to as neuroscience. The neuroscience, most of you 
who are listening to this, uh, following this webinar, you did biology in your uh, secondary school, some of you in your primary school. We know that we as human beings, we are creatures of stimulus. We are triggered. And the moment we have something which has triggered us, it can be an event. It can be maybe the news that you have just switched on your television and there is something which has been said, or your boss has just walked in, or your spouse. All these are triggers. And what they say immediately, we have what we call an emotional brain. The emotional brain is actually a brain which acts in a split of seconds. And it is there because we were creatures of wildlife and God created some way of making sure that the human race survived. So he created our brain, the back of our brain, we have what we call amygdala, which is a small gland in both sides of the brain. And they are situated close to your back brain. If you take a pencil, you, but don't do this exercise. You take a pencil, you put it in your nose and another in your ear, where they meet, that's where amygdala is. Now, when you have two of them, we refer to them as amygdala. Now these, according to the creation of our maker, they are danger detectors. They are able to detect what is happening in the environment and decide whether it is something which is of a threat. And when the moment it realizes what is happening is a threat, for example, corona is a threat. So immediately, this is how you will experience life. You become concerned, you become worried, you don't know what is going to happen. Sometimes also frustration kick in, but also you are overly stressed because your emotional brain has registered, this is a threat, it is not good for me. Then of course, we have a combination of the emotional brain and your thinking brain, which is situated at the front of your head. We call it prefrontal cortex. And this one, it is an analytical uh, brain. When it receives the impulse from the emotional brain, immediately also it does analysis. And if it confirms that actually it is a threat, it is not something good that I can stay in, then immediately your options are narrowed. You don't have so many options. It is either you fight, you freeze, or you run away. So you have the limitation in terms of the options. So the disengagement becomes really a decision that you make. Now, how you experience it, always it will actually affect your decision. Those decisions, whether to fight, whether to freeze, or will be because of what has been registered in your emotional brain, got interpreted, interpreted in your thinking brain, confirmed that it is a threat, and that is how you will experience. Conversely, when actually an event occurs and your emotional brain actually register it as a reward, something good, something which is not harmful to you, immediately you feel satisfied and immediately you find it meaningful in terms of life and whatever. For example, if we were to hear today there is a vaccine, there is a cure of COVID-19, surely this is what is going to be. Our brains will immediately register reward and will feel very happy. And then if we take this to our thinking brain and the thinking brain confirm that actually this is something which is useful, what happens? The way your brain will work, you become very expansive, you become laterally conscious, you, become, you, you think deep about issues, you become solution generator because you have so many options but also you wish to engage in the situation and make sure that you find a solution. So your decisions will be reflected on how your brain has registered. So if you have registered very good, then your decisions will be okay, I'm buoyant, I'm going to go out, I'm going to do this, I'm starting this new project, and so on. Your behavior will be visible to other people, and so on. So this is the whole science of emotions and how actually our brain is a center of a control. It is almost like our control tower. And now this control tower, when actually you are in the reward state, it, it, it secretes the enzymes which will make you 
healthy mentally. Okay, you also your body will be healthy because you are having this positive energy in you. But when it is the threat, then discretion also brings about a confusion, a concussion of emotions that have direct impact on how you feel on your body. You may start feeling tired. You may start feeling like, you know, bored. You may start feeling like, you know, I cannot handle it and so on. So your behaviors will be reflected from the control tower, which is your, your brain. So when you look at uh, our emotions, as we have discussed the chart, which we showed, there are some unpleasant emotions. When you are experienced unpleasant emotion, especially when the situation seems like it is a threat, like now we are experiencing uncertainty, we have a lot of assumptions. The result is like we make assumptions. We create our own uh, video links in our, our brains. We, we, we circulate a lot of information. Some of it, it is even some misinformation. And then we act on the uncertainty. Below the water, you are uncertain. But what we see above the water is people making assumptions, sometimes assumptions which do not make sense at all. But again, people, because most of them are feeling uncertain, they go with those assumptions. Below the water, when you are having unpleasant emotion, it's a stress. Sometimes you become aggressive now. Like we are having, I had a client who has just called. He doesn't know how to handle the workforce because he's not making any sales, but he's trying to ex explain the situation, but he's not getting a lot of cooperation. So the aggression, which is coming from his employee, are coming from underlying emotions, which is termed as uh, stress. Then the anxiety, which some of you have mentioned, the anxiety is very deep because you are anxious. The anxiety comes from the things that we are fearing or we are waiting to happen and we don't know how they are going to affect us. So we tend to re be reactive because we are so confused. We have a potpourri of uh, emotions. So our behaviors become quite reactionary. And sometimes people will say, but you never used to be like this. It's because you are harboring unpleasant emotion, which is anxiety in yourself. Then we have another unpleasant one, which is worried. And when you are utterly worried, normally you focus on the program problem. You don't look for, for, for solution. Your preoccupation is more problem focused. You don't see the way out and you cannot see how you're going to get out of there. And you have heard about people who are quite self-pity and they say we are just in the vicious of, uh, of um, things not working and they are not budging or they are not taking any step. These people, they must be having deep worry. And if this worry is not taken care of, they can slide into something which is more serious. So in terms of mental health, when you look at uh, these kind of emotions which are below the surface and the reactions that we are able to see, then that's when you know, I need to do something. I need to assist someone to really be able to come out of these emotions. So when we explore further uh, where the anxiety come from is we have had it as one of the feelings you are feeling, we can say anxiety is born out of fear of being out of control. Now we know the COVID-19 has rendered most of the humanity like feeling we cannot control it. This thing is spreading so fast. This thing is killing us. But also there is this feeling like it is also changing the way we are used to. Our way of life is changing. So we feel like we have lost control. If I use one writer, Chinua Achebe, said things fall apart. So you feel like everything is falling apart. And this is where now a very good ground for anxiety. And another ground for anxiety is unable to tolerate the uncertainty. Because most of you, you have mentioned the uncertainty. Now the issue is, do we have emotional stability to be able to tolerate the uncertainty that we are seeing around? So these are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. And if you are in your present moment, then you can say, okay, there is uncertainty, but there is something that I can do. So, and then it is also rooted in worrying about unknown. We don't know what is gonna be because our brain are sort of like a, a prediction machine. It's one to predict what is going to happen tomorrow. What's, what is going to happen to my job? What is going to happen to my family? 
what is going to happen to the education of my children? They are now at home. So these are the things that we're worrying about. But also it is from waiting for something to happen. And this is another thing because we don't know what is going to happen, but we have this you know, fear, which is so deep in ourselves that something is going to happen. I don't know what is going to be, but I know it is not going to be good for me. So then you have these panic attacks. You have heard about people who have, have panic attacks and the panic attacks can be so severe that some, some, sometimes you feel like you cannot breathe. You feel like, you know, you, you, are, you, are, you are losing oxygen. You are, you, your legs are not carrying you. You feel like you want to have a diarrhea. You feel like the tightening of their chest. And when you start feeling the tightening of their chest, then the anxiety is becoming even bigger because you are told, oh, you know, with corona, you feel like your chest is tightening. Then you increase your anxiety. So it is important when you are in such situation to have this knowledge of emotional um, intelligence to be able to move quickly to say, okay, now these emotions I'm being told that within a 24 hours period, I can have 15,000 thoughts. And out of these 15,000 thoughts, 50% of them can be pleasant and 50% of them can be not pleasant. So how do I now catch myself as a policeman or policewoman and move myself to pleasant emotions? So when you acquire some pleasantness in your emotion, First of all, you forge something which we call a sense of purpose, yeah? A sense of purpose. There is a greater purpose in my life. COVID cannot rob it. So if there is a greater purpose in my life, I look for ways to engage with one another, to engage with colleagues, to engage with my community to see what I can do. That greater sense of purpose will make you feel buoyant and energized. Then there is a sense of being valued that after all, Yes, it is a situation that I cannot control, but still I'm a very valuable member of this company, valuable member of my family. And then you start caring for others. You start taking actions of what can I do to make sure that others are also in a good uh, place in terms of uh, feeling well. And then you start now getting yourself to get informed, looking for um, very, um, reliable sources of information and you move from problem focused to solution focused and we have seen it happening around us we have seen many people who have come together we have seen private sector coming together looking for solution how we can support our government to overcome this thing we have seen some entrepreneurs who have come up with some very innovative ways of handling the situation that we are in so we are saying these are people who are harboring some emotions which are pleasant and they are doing something which is productive. And then of course, you feel empowered because the moment you feel this emotion of empowerment that yes, things are falling apart, but still there is a sense of control that I can influence. So you become innovative. And we can see a number of companies have become very innovative. Some schools, now we are having children who are learning from their home because the schools have now engaged in technology making sure that they are running classes, examinations are being taken online and so on. Companies like ours, we are also doing a lot of uh, Zoom conferences. You can see we are turning a lot of our training into digital platform. These are just reactions and these are based on productive emotions. When we say, yes, there is this crisis which is going on, but there is something that we can do and we can contribute to our society. So we see a lot of th these things and you as audience, you have been watching what is happening around, you have been watching what is being said, you have been watching the televisions and the radios and what our leaders are telling us. Those who are coming from pleasant emotions, they're engaging with us very well. But those who are still harboring their own unpleasant emotions, then you can see even the engagement with the populace is not that direct or it's not that clear. So it is very important to catch yourself where you are and move to the pleasant emotions. So now when we look at emotions, we say we are creatures of stimuli. We are creatures of emotions. So we can say human beings are emotional beings. So emotions are very important, whether they are pleasant or unpleasant. When we were small, most of us were being told being angry is bad, but actually any emotion is important. 
It is how you acknowledge that particular emotion and how you channel it and how you react to it. And in some cases with our training, we know that we can have control and emotions as we have put it, they are really a good source of information. They're telling you something. What is important to do in a crisis environment like in which we are now is to pay attention to how you are feeling and to be more and to take more action which are intentional with your emotion. So if I'm feeling restless, what is making me feel restless? And then you take uh, some very clear actions that will move you to pleasant emotions. So we should not discount our emotions, we should embrace them. And when you embrace your emotions, when you live in the present, don't try to live in the future. The future will unfold and will come to that bridge. So when you are living in the present moment and you notice the kind of emotions that are, are happening to you and you take intentional action to really move yourself to productive emotions rather than allowing your emotions to take control. When you allow your emotions to take control, it is exactly what we are talking about. Anxiety will take its toll. You will have panic attacks. You will sleep in the night and you wake up. You are, cannot breathe. You feel bad. And at the end of the day, you have kidney stones. So you can see the relationship between our emotions and our physical well-being. So emotions are there. We cannot run away from them. It is just a matter of acknowledging them, experiencing them, being able to categorize and say intentionally, you want to move to pleasant emotions. So we have talked about uh, emotions and that we cannot avoid. We are creatures of emotions, creatures of stimuli. Now we need to move on and talk about now, what kind of strategies are we going to use? We, we appreciate they are going to be there. They are a rich source of information. Now, how are we going to manage ourselves? Well, how are we going to cope? So if we are talking about taking control, we need to move to that zone now to try to see what you audience are you doing? So we are moving to a poll, which uh, Derek is going to run. Zohra, thank you so much for that introduction to the science of emotions. You know, you made the link so clear between how we act and how the brain actually processes events that come in and that ultimately affects any decisions we will make, our behavior, and even our performance. So I really like the way that you introduced it. You know, there was something that struck me when this redefining event of our lifetime started, the way people described it. In fact, there were many headlines that actually described this event as an apocalypse. An apocalypse. The definition of an apocalypse is the end of the world as we know it. Mm. But you know, as I was looking through the different definitions of apocalypse, the Greeks, the Greeks, is it the Greeks or in Greece? Yes. I think it's the Greeks. Yeah. Right. Greeks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their definition of apocalypse is a revelation or an unfolding of things that are not previously known. So not an end of the world, but instead a revelation of things not known. So I would sort of like us to look at it in that sense. This is an event, you can't control it. What you can control is how to intentionally act with your emotions. Winston Churchill, when in 1941, the, you, the, you know, England was going to face the scourge of Nazism, said in one of the greatest speeches ever recorded by mankind, it said to every man or woman that comes in his lifetime, a special moment when he's offered the chance to do something special. What mm -hmm. a tragedy if that moment finds him unprepared or unqualified. Mm. So this handling of being intentional with emotions, it's a revelation. Are you going to succumb or are you going to flourish? And so this brings us to our poll very nicely and the poll which we will allow you to have a number of choices is what are you doing to help you cope? So if we can get the choices of that poll up on the screen, I hope we're able to see those choices. I'm going to ask my hardworking colleagues in behind the scenes to bring up the poll. Uh, do we have that poll ready? 
we may be experiencing some difficulties behind the scene and not able to show you that poll. If that's the case, then not to worry. Perhaps we can just turn this into a moment of, uh, of your telling us um, what are you doing to help yourself cope with, as I said, this black swan, this, this, this peculiar event, whether you're in Tanzania or you're in Kenya. So if you can just open up the chat and uh, just uh, let us know what are you doing? As the Winston Churchill speech said, are you prepared or unprepared? What are you doing right now? And let's see if we can get uh, a number of uh, responses. I'm looking at the chat very keenly. Okay, George says, reaching out to reputable sources of information. I feel you, George. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else who would like to contribute to what they are doing positively to help themselves cope? What strategies they might be using? All right, I will share with what I am doing. And I'm sure this is something, Zuhura, you're going to talk about when it comes mm -hmm. to creating a schedule or a timetable. Mm. All right. So Violet says, listening to music, talking to colleagues and friends, taking mm -hmm. solo drives. Mm -hmm. I feel you, Violet. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else would like to share? All right. Uh, Janet says, studying about the pandemic as much as I can and taking proactive prevention actions. Yes, very good, Janet. Mm. Do we have any more people who would like to contribute what proactive, positive steps they are taking? All right, Zuhura, I'll just let you, okay. Jerry says meditation, going into the nature, listening to myself. Uh, mm -hmm. in the moment, affirmations. Oh, that's a very good list. Zena says, practicing a lot of self-care, participating mm -hmm. in a lot of free online classes, <laughs> such as these ones, to better develop my skills. So Zuhura, those are some of the sentiments coming from the participants in, mm -hmm. uh, in today's session. Okay. Somebody else says, refocusing their energy from stressful thoughts. Okay. Um, so I had uh, stopped sharing. Now I want to go back to sharing the screen. <clears throat> um, okay. So um, we, we, we have taken a poll and it is very interesting because some of the uh, strategies that uh, you have talked about will be covering them today. There are some more. I'm sorry for the hiccup that we had in terms of our poll but will go alone. Uh, we have a number of strategies under emotional intelligence that uh, are able to help people to cope in situations that are not familiar. In revelation, like what Derek has put, it is not the end of the world. It is something which we don't know. But then the question is, how are we prepared to be able to cope with this situation? and whether we can seize the moment to find opportunities in this situation and thrive, not only exist, but thrive as, as human beings. So one of the strategy is thinking. Uh, in terms of thinking, it is very important to create a boundary in terms of how you are going to use your time and creating a boundary in terms of how much news you are going to focus on, how much email, how much uh, what's up you are going to focus on and so on. But also the boundary can also be about um, what kind of things that you may decide to mute so that you are able to focus and channel your emotions to more productive emotion. Reducing how often you switch on or you tune into uh, news or social media, you can also have a gratitude. I remember one of the feelings when we are starting this uh, uh, session, it was a feeling of gratitude. There are some people who are keeping gratitude book or journal, and every day they normally put on what they are grateful of and uh, record them 
just remembering there are some pleasant things that are happening in my life. Although there is a crisis which is looming out there, but I can reflect and thank my God that the day has gone, I'm still alive. Then they record every little gratitude that they offer to God. And this is very good for your psychological well-being. There is also diarizing your thinking and reflection time. You know, we have a life which maybe I can say uh, thank you to COVID-19. Please do not kill me. But we were almost engaged in rat race. We didn't have time. It was like we had a very cluttered life where you are running all the time. Sometimes you are running in circles. But if we can only have time to reflect and think, it is very good. And we, most of us, we are followers of different scriptures. You can even see the prophets used to have solitude moment where they could think crystal clear things and they used to get away from people, go somewhere where they can achieve solitude, have time to think and reflect, perceive, reason with and whatever. So this is very important for your mind because it energizes your mind, it provides clarity, it removes all the webs of uncertainty and ambiguity in your, in, your, in your thinking. And this has, by extension, very, very important uh, impact on your physical well-being. So it is important to make sure that you have reflection time. And then you have the perspective taking where anything that you hear, maybe it is bombarded through the social media and it takes some time to really form a perspective around that thing or even do some consultation with people you trust where you can have a better perspective rather than really going in to say, oh my God, this is going to be really bad for me. But when you take perspective, it is very good. So this is the first thinking is one of the strategies that actually you can employ. And God has created us with the intellect and the ability to think. So use it at this particular moment. Then we have physical. Physical, again, it takes you into the issues of how you are managing yourself and the issues about are you sleeping better at least eight hours so that you can achieve the healing. Your body can restore itself. Normally they say when we go to sleep, it is the time for our maker to massage us and to renew our internal organs. So it is very important to make sure that you achieve that kind of sleep. But if you are using so much social media, you will not be able to sleep that well. Then there is a need of li uh, limiting alcohol consumption. And if you are a caffeine you know, addict, also limit the caffeine, especially after two o'clock because we know that it has ability to stimulate, to overstimulate your, your, your brain to the extent that you are not able to achieve a total rest. Improve your diet, very, very important. Now you are going to see much more about the diet. We are talking about the coronavirus and with many viruses, they enter our body and if it find our body that we don't have enough defense system in terms of immunity, then it is very easy to overpower us. So when you eat wholesome food, you eat you know, organic food, you eat a lot of fruits and you eat a lot of, uh, of uh, vegetables, then you have a chance of boosting your immunity. I cannot overemphasize the issue of exercise. For an adult, at least have 30 minutes of rigorous exercise so that your body, your muscles are able to take in, in more oxygen. For children, one hour plus is good. So it is very important even for those who are having children at home to make sure that they participate in some sort of exercise to ensure they are very well. Then there is mindful meditation where we are talking about having some time with yourself and focusing on positives in your life where we call make your mind smile. When you focus on positive things, you can feel like you are living in that positive environment and then your mind is smiling. You can even take a vacation from COVID-19 by just closing your eyes and having this feeling you are living in the world which is free of all these pandemic, you are smelling fresh air. The moment you take that kind of a leave, you restore your physical well-being. So those are the things that you can do 
But then we have one technique which is being practiced by sage of this world, and they say it works very well. We have 24 hours in our day, but they say there is one hour of power in our lives. And if we practice that one hour of power, it can enhance our mental well-being so well. It can lower our stresses so much. This hour of power, if you practice it, it has three segments. One segment is 20 minutes of meditation of prayer in seclusion. Most of us, when we wake up in the morning, we do our prayers, some do meditation, whatever you are doing, it's very important to have that kind of a renewal. Now, that is taking care of your spirit and your soul. Then you have 20 minutes of active physical exercise, which takes care of your body. And then you have 20 minutes of uplifting reading, listening to a music or engagement. Maybe you love listening to uh, gospel music or Quran recitation. These are all to make your mind healthier. So you have three actions. One, to improve your spirit and your soul. Second one, to improve your, uh, your physical being. And the third one, to improve your mental well-being. So if you practice the hour of power, it can define your other 23 hours very well because you'll become buoyant. I have tried it with one person who was very anxious this week. And the report I received today, it is her third day. She's doing exercise. And she says, I'm thinking more clearly. I'm feeling more positive. I'm not as fearful as I was. And I'm now much better. And now she has plunged herself into working on a project that had, had stalled for three days. So it is very important to practice that hour of power. So when you practice it, you achieve your mind, body, and soul balance. Your day starts with a bang because you have already taken care of yourself. You should not wait for the world to take care of you or for the government to take care of you. You start by making sure that you achieve this kind of a balance. And it significantly enhances your 23 hours. And you become more productive. And when we talk about becoming more productive, it means the productivity is fueled by productive emotions because now you have taken care of who you are as a person because a person is not only the body. You have the soul, you have the spirit, you have the mind, and all these have to be taken care for you to remain buoyant with psychological health and well-being. Another strategy is relationship. These, we say human beings are creatures of relationship. Relationships are very important. It is very frustrating to live in a world where maybe you are not actually having uh, human contact. The human contact enhances us. It makes us become better versions of ourselves. So it is very important to make sure that you are improving uh, the relationship that are in your, in your life. You are remaining in touch, staying connected with the people you trust, you know, structure regular check-in to see how they are doing, uh, structure regular conversation. And sometimes you can even structure a social time where you have virtual breaks with them, uh, where you are doing maybe happy hour um, virtually by saying, okay, now, why don't you take your glass of wine if you take wine or juice? And why don't you take a, a bite? And then we are having a virtual kind of uh, interaction. So these regular virtual interactions in terms of groups, like you have friends that you have not been able to see each other because of the social distancing, um, you can have that kind of breaks and you can laugh and laughter is a medicine. So it is very important to remain in touch. And also the relationship, it's when you are having some kind of anxiety about how are my children doing or your parent or your uh, siblings. So just a matter of picking a telephone call and having a discussion, it can take a lot of stress and dramatically your stress levels will come down and you'll be able to function better in terms of your mental health and in terms of your physical health. Sharing your emotions with a person that you know and you trust. You know, there is an adage which says a problem shares is a problem halved. So sometimes you may really lock yourself in and you feel like this is a mountain. But when you share it, you find it's, like, it's just like a molehill 
and it's something which, which was consuming you so much, but you share it and you're happy. Like in the morning, I woke up with a, this kind of uncertainty of not wanting to do, uh, knowing what to do in, case, in terms of cutting down the cost of running my business. And I realized that I didn't sleep very well because I was having fretful moments like a baby waking up. But in the morning at around six, half six, I shared what was going on in my emotion with my husband. And my husband, within maybe 10 minutes, he enhanced me so much. I cannot even thank him enough. And from that enhancement, I called my partner and we made the right decision. I called somebody else who is doing some work for us and we are riding on. The day is looking very good for me. So it is very important to have that combination of sharing. So when we come to how you can protect your mental health, it is very important to limit the news and to be careful on what you read. Very, very important because we have so much of misinformation going around. And if you don't limit, then you are hurting your mental well-being big time. Have breaks from social media. Very important to make sure that you're having break. Now the social media has given us these beautiful features of muting things. You can mute what triggers your anxiety. You can mute keywords which may trigger your anxiety and they won't come to you. You can even mute WhatsApp groups. There are some WhatsApp groups which are like doomsayer, so they are always passing negative uh, messages of what is going to happen. So you can mute that, you can hide Facebook posts and so on. So you have some kind of a control over your life by making sure that you are protecting your own mental health. So I'm going to take you to watch this from, um, from the World Health um, Organization, the director has given us a fantastic video and I want us to focus on it for a few minutes and then we'll get back. Zuhura, if just one minute. That. Yes. I'm so sorry, before you uh, play the video, I just wanted to encourage everybody, if you have any questions or any comments or ideas, I mean, Zuhura, you've shared a wealth of information, please feel free to put them into the chat box and we'll address them later on throughout this webinar. Thank you, Zuhura. Okay. Thank you very much, Dirk. And uh, yes, as he has put it, I've shared a lot of information and I've, sometimes I'm worried that it is too much. But if you ask questions, we'll be able to unpack. And Dirk is also an um, emotional intelligence practitioner coach and is very much in this space. So we'll be sharing. But also in the background, we have our team which also will be able to share quite a wealth of information before we end this webinar. Many people, life is changing dramatically. My family is no different. My daughter is now taking her classes online from home because her school is closed. For the rest of the world, that even the most severe situation can be turned around. But the experience of cities and countries that have pushed back this virus give hope and courage to the rest of the world. During this difficult time, it's important to continue looking after your physical and mental health. This will not only help you in the long term. First, we know that for many people, life is changing dramatically. My family to function properly. Eat a healthy and nutritious diet, which helps your immune system to function properly. Second, limit your alcohol consumption and avoid sugary drinks. Third, don't smoke. Smoking can increase your risk of developing severe disease if you become infected with COVID-19. Fourth, Exercise. WHO recommends 30 minutes of physical activity a day for adults and one hour a day for children. If your local or national guidelines allow it, go outside for a walk, a run or a ride, and keep a safe distance from others. If you can't leave the house, find an exercise video online. 
dance to music, do some yoga, or walk up and down the stairs. If you're working at home, make sure you don't sit in the same position for long periods. Get up and take a three minutes break every 30 minutes. Fifth, look after your mental health. It's normal to feel stressed, confused, and scared during a crisis. Talking to people you know and trust can help. Supporting other people in your community can help you as much as it does them. Check on neighbors, family, and friends. Compassion is a medicine. Listen to music, read a book, or play a game. And try not to read or watch too much news if it makes you anxious. Get your information from reliable sources once or twice a day. COVID-19 is taking so much from us, but it's also giving us something special, the opportunity to come together as one humanity, to work together, to learn together, to grow together. I thank you. I want to thank my audience for watching the video. I'm sure there is something that we have learned from the video and the advice of how to take care of our mental health. I want to encourage you to ask questions as Beck has asked us. Please make sure that you're asking questions. You're, we, we will spend time to respond to your questions. And I want to pick on the video one particular thing which is very important, which is empathy. And I'm picking from the director of the WHO saying that compassion is medicine. And when we look at empathy from the emotional intelligence perspective, empathy is simply defined as wearing someone's shoes and walking in them for kilometer and experience how they feel on your feet. It is mirroring the emotions of another person, understanding, being able to be empathetic to what they are going through. So when we are talking about taking care of our physical, I mean, our mental health, when we go out and we start supporting, yeah, when we start supporting other people, start understanding where others are coming from, the kind of fears, anxiety they're having, and being there, yeah, lending a hand so that we make them become better, make them become productive. Then we are doing something which is useful and that would make us feel a lot better. So practice empathy as a way of managing your own psychological well-being. When you practice empathy by showing compassion towards other people, it makes you feel better. And this you can do by supporting work colleagues as they are also going through this crisis, your family, supporting your children, supporting them by answering their questions. Some of them may have very interesting questions that they want to be answered. So it is very important to make sure that you are there, but also you can have empathy on other people in your community that may require some kind of, uh, of support. So you can have a neighbor who is maybe elderly and she is not able to go out and about. You can support this person by maybe um, helping them to do some errands, making sure that actually they are taken care of and so on. So you can do a lot of things that can make you feel much better. So we have covered quite a number of strategies and I want now to bring us back to our session as a whole by making a summary. We started by looking at how we are feeling, what kind of emotions, what we can be grateful about and so on. And then we went into the neuroscience of emotions 
we looked at where the emotions come from and the control tower, which is our brain and how our brain work. We also covered a lot about strategies that one can take to survive better. We also watched a video on what WHO is advising us during this particular crisis. But also we have shared a lot about the type of strategies that some of you are taking. And uh, we believe that in the chat box, you are still sharing. But bringing it together, we are saying that there is a situation which is real. The COVID-19 is real, is with us. And it doesn't look like it is going to let us free any, any time soon. We'll have it for some time. But the issue is, how are we reacting to it? How are we uh, rising, you know, to make ourselves, you know, valuable and productive in this situation? And the question we need to ask ourselves is, are we prepared to really overcome what has come to be our realities of our life to nowadays? Then the second thing, it is also looking from a very positive angle that yes, we have this crisis, but there are also so many things which are good, which are happening. And these things may also bring quite a number of opportunities for us to maintain a better balance. So when we are wrapping up, we are saying, you have had a lot of strategies and other things. What you need to do, experiment with different strategies like thinking, physical relationship, and how to take care of yourself, the hour of power. Use these strategies in your daily routine. Give them two to three weeks to work because some people try a strategy, but then they try it only once or twice. Normally they say, when you try a strategy, keep on it for some time. Like this lady I'm talking about, it is a third day in a row, she's doing exercises and she's feeling great. I'm calling her every morning to find out how she's doing. But she was so convinced that she has a COVID-19 only to find that it was a panic attack and she's fine. Reflect on your efficiency. How efficient are you? And this you can do it by making sure that you have goal setting every morning, what you are going to do and take out what you have been able to achieve. Pay particular attention to strategies that enhance your connectedness and relationship with others because we are creatures of relationship. Invest in that and make sure that you remain focused. Achieving emotional stability will boost your physical well-being. Achieving emotional stability will boost your psychological well-being. So you can see how it is related. And everything starts from a control tower, which is called how our brains work. And not everything which crosses your mind is a fact. Some of the thoughts which come to us, they are not based on anything tangible. So it is very important for you to say, yes, I know you have crossed my mind, but this is not a fact. I'm going to move on and do some other things which are more productive. So I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. And if you have any questions, please do forward them to us and we'll be able to respond to your questions. Derek, back to you. Zuhura, thank you so much. I love the way that you wrapped it up and your summary, I think, brought everything together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, earlier we were trying to run this poll and uh, we had some technical issues behind the scenes, but I think we will be able to launch it again. Now, obviously Zuhura has covered a few things, so there may be parts of this poll that don't necessarily um, relate, but I, I'll still like to launch it. And uh, if you can see it, perhaps these are things that you are going to do as a result of this conversation that you've had with Zuhura or that you are already doing before and you're just going to double down and increase on these. So if you don't mind just going in there and um, it would be great to sort of see what strategies that you are using or that you are going to use as a result of this conversation that we've had. Mm. Great, Zuhura, can you see the poll? I can see a few people. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Mm. Mind, the thinking is coming up. Right. Relationship is also high up there. 
yeah, almost 40% on the relationship, 40% on the mind, exercise to take my mind off, yes. I listen to music, we have 80%. Uh, 50% on the taking your mind off, which is good, because too much of it will actually kill you, yeah. Very good. So I will just end that poll right there. And it looks like some of the tips that you shared with us mm. are going to be put into good use. So we have mm. the exercise, the calling the friend, the chatting. So again, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to interact with us, please feel free to type in either your questions or your ideas or even comments in the chat box. Um, Zuhura, perhaps I can ask you a, a couple of questions. Yes. And um, I, I really liked, for example, the power hour or the mm. hour of power. That's something I think I'm also going to try mm -hmm. and incorporate into my day. And the muting of the WhatsApp groups. That's mm -hmm. something that I need to do. These WhatsApp groups are just too many with too much information. So I particularly like that. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the empathy that you were talking about. And particularly those of us who may have children, particularly mm. young children, school going children, mm. and they're in the house. Um, what would you be able to say to people who have um, young, young people in the house and they're trying to deal with that mm -hmm. situation based on emotional intelligence? Do you have any ideas around that? Okay. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a new way because most of us, we were working in offices and uh, we were not used to staying with our children the whole day. And you know, children are creatures of restlessness. And if you are not careful, you can really destroy your children without being able to know that you are doing it unconsciously. So it is very important to be in the present moment to listen to what is happening to your yourself and also to be empathetic about the questions or the kind of uh, interruptions that you are receiving from your own children. First of all, I think the first thing is to be gratitude, uh, to have that feeling of gratitude that many people love to have children. There are some people who do not have them. The noises that you are finding, it's a noise. There are some houses that are missing that kind of noise. That feeling of gratitude itself will set you in a very good mood where you are able to listen to your little one very easily and respond to their questions. Now the young mind, the young brain is very vulnerable because they say for every child who is born in this world, there must be a corresponding adult energy that will nurture this child to become somebody. Now, if that corresponding energy is not nurturing, it is actually destructive then you are creating a lot of problem. It means you are not rising to the moment. So it is very important to look for some activities that these children can do. Vary them in such a way that they are able to have some kind of uh, fun. Like I have one woman who has decided to teach the children how to do uh, home craft, you know. They are making, they are doing bead works, they are doing, uh, they are doing crocheting, they are creating some shapes, they are painting, and it has assisted her to focus on her work because she gives them homework and sometimes she participates with them to do what they are doing. So there are so many things that you can do at home to enhance the psychological well-being mm -hmm. of your young ones. Fantastic. So Zuhura, we have some feedback from some of the participants. Doris says, thanks a lot, very helpful has helped me fix some of my puzzles together. I love the pleasant and the unpleasant emotions understanding. Janet says, thank you so much, Dada Zuhura. Most of what you enlightened us is indeed at, is needed at these uncertain times. I will take action and practice the learnings. And uh, Teddy Warrior, all the way in Western Kenya says, Zuhura, great watching you. Thanks for your high EQ, well-spoken. That hour of power is solid. Problem shared is a problem solved. And he sends his greetings. And I think mm. we have one more person over here who also says, Asante Sana. 
Mm. Uh, Christina says, very insightful and emotionally uplifting. Thank you. Thank you. So Zuhura, as we wind up, was there perhaps one more thing you wanted to share with everybody before we let them go? I know a lot of people uh, might have tight schedules or they have yeah. some other things that they wanted to do. Oh yeah, the last thing that I'd like to share, we say we come from a strong group of genos, uh, mm -hmm. certified genos emotional intelligence uh, practitioners. We are coaches, we, are, we care about East Africa and we want to really help in our own way, humble way, to ground people, especially during this crisis. So we have a number of webinars. On Thursday, we are going to have a webinar on remote control. We are going to use the same meeting ID that we have used today. And then on Tuesday the 12th, we are also having leading your team remotely, tools and techniques for leading a remote team, especially those people like George who is a leader and he has his team working from different locations they'll be able to really resonate with this particular webinar and this will be done by vicky uh, myself and vicky and on thursday 7th when we meet again we have remote control tips tools and techniques for being productive whilst working from home it's from mary i'll be working with mary mukindia on this one. So we welcome you and also spread the word that these are free webinars and we'll be able to share quite a lot. Zohura, thank, you, thank you so much for sharing that. So for all of you, just to reiterate, we have two more sessions coming up on Thursday this week and next Tuesday. So please do tune in. So mine is just to say Asante Sana, really loved this. Every time I listen to you speak, I learn something new. So this was enlightening for me, as I'm sure it was for everybody else. Again, people are still saying thank you and Asante in the comments. Okay. So uh, everybody's very welcome. Uh, very often we do these and we have people who work behind the scenes and we don't give them enough um, credit. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them all by name. We have Ruth working very hard at Profiles. We have Stella supporting her. We have Rukaya with you over there in Tanzania. So Asante Sana, ladies, you're the reason that myself and even Zuhura are able to do this. You do the heavy lifting behind the scenes. So we want to say thank you very much. And to everyone who participated, thank you too for being part of this as we continue to manage and maneuver and indeed thrive during these uncertain times. Zuhura, thank you very much again. We really appreciate this. And so from us, thank you. I think it'll be goodbye. And uh, goodbye. as I like to say, <laughs> thank you very much. At the top. Asante sana, everybody. Take okay, care. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dad. Thank, thank you, everybody. <laughs>